Uh, in this video, I have the Steel Series Apex 5 keyboard and someone has spilled tomato juice all over here. In fact, it's so sticky that even if I press down some of the keys, they stay down. Look at this. Doesn't want to even come back up. Check out that, staying in there. And some of these are fine and some are not. Right, so the first step is to remove the keys. So all I do is I take my fingers and I squeeze it like that. I go like that. I just pinch it. For the wider keys, I use two fingers and then I pull it up like that. Right, now taking a star screwdriver, I unscrew each one of these screws on the top of the face. Right, once you've removed all the screws, and there are a lot of them, there's some here, there, 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 and there's ones that you might not even see, like there, there, so there's a lot of screws. Once you've removed all the screws, this can flip off. Now, if you wanted to, you could remove each one of these press buttons, but I'm not going to do that yet because I think I can actually clean it with them in. I'll only remove the very dirty ones because it's quite a tedious job to remove each one of these, but I need to separate this from the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lift it off and I'm just putting my nail along the seam there and it should just come out. If yours isn't coming out, it means you've left a screw somewhere. Right, so I can actually just flip that off completely. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and clean this thoroughly. I can see the tomato juice all over here and some of these buttons, it's even on my fingers and it's very sticky. So I'm gonna first start with this. Now I recommend using a rubbing alcohol for the cleaning. This is a 90% alcohol, you also get a 70%, both are fine. A hand sanitizer is alcohol with glycol. Now that's what I don't recommend because the glycol inside the hand sanitizer leaves a bit of a residue. So I prefer the rubbing alcohol because there's no glycol. It's just alcohol and water. So here I have it in a spray bottle and now I'm going to spray everywhere. Now I'm going to press these in and let that alcohol sit and dissolve some of that uh, tomato juice. Now I take a toothbrush and I start cleaning. I just clean around all these little buttons. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the tomato juice off the surface here. Now you can also use a nail brush. I don't rub over that, I still want it to be shiny. Now while that's dissolving, I just go to the back now. The reason why I'm using rubbing alcohol is it evaporates very quickly. You could put this under a tap and do it and then leave it in the sun, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to use the alcohol. The alcohol will evaporate very quickly. Right, now I actually want to get the tomato juice away from this. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going specifically deliberately from one side to the other. I want it to be pushed off the face plate here. Now, if you have a blower, it's very useful at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my blower and I'm blowing it out. Right, now I'm just cleaning this side again. And those that are very dirty, I put quite a lot of the alcohol in. Yeah, these buttons are all popping up perfectly now. Right, so while this is drying, I'm now going to start with the circuit board side. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same alcohol and I'm just going to spray it. It's fine, you won't break it. You can spray it on the electronics, no problem. And I've sprayed quite a bit. And now I'm very careful because now I'm using my toothbrush and I'm just very gently just giving it a bit of a clean. I'm just removing the dirt off the front here. I'm going very lightly because there's little transistors here and I don't want to pull them off the board. But I do need to get the juice off there because the juice might cause a dielectric breakdown between those terminals. Yeah, you can see the juice is coming off. There was a lot of juice here right by this little microcontroller. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blower and I'm going to blow it while it's vertical. Right, now that this is completely clean, now I need to open this up. So here are the screws. I've got to remove these screws. Right, so I've removed the six screws and now I can lift this, but be careful because there's a cable over here. So what I do is I take my fingernails and I pull this back so that this cable can slide out. All right, then there's one over here. You can use a flat screwdriver. Put your screwdriver here and just turn once. And now it's coming out. Right, now I've got the main board out. Right, so this side's completely clean. Now over here, 
is where I have the problem. Right, now over here, I need to remove this. It's very sticky. I can feel all the uh, juice that's over here. So I need to open this over here. So I need to peel this tape off. Right, so I can now open these. So I just take my fingernail and open it like that. If you want to use a screwdriver, you can. Just be careful. So I open both sides there and there. Do not pull it at an angle. Make sure it pulls out like that. Right, so this is completely sticky. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this down. Right, now that I've just got the board in hand, I can take my rubbing alcohol and clean this. What you can also do is do it a little bit vertically and just get the dirt off so it goes down to the bottom. And now all I do is I take my blower and I dry it. Right, now I can just dry this and I can reinstall this now. Make sure that these are completely open. This one goes under and this one goes on top. Line up the holes to make sure it's seated correctly. Right, so I know it's incorrectly when the holes are all lining up. So if I go along the unit, I can see that the pad here is in alignment with the board. Right, so I press it as much as I can. And then this one I can now close. And this one here just needs to be pressed in a bit more and I can close it. Right, now I can take that tape and seal it again. All right, so now if there's some juice here, it's a good opportunity to clean it. Mine looks fine. I'm just going to move on now. Now, in order to get this in here, I recommend going at an angle. So I come at an angle and I make sure that the clip is open and I just press it in there. Right, so I just put my finger here to depress the black slider. Okay, so that's in. Now, don't forget this one over here. So I just need to grab that through and I'm not putting any stress on that one. So there it comes. Now, I don't have to worry about that now. I just need to reseat this completely. So it's now reseated. Now, I'm just going to put the screws in so long. Just support it with your hand at the back here because it does want to deflect. Right, so now I can just plug this in. Right, I'll just plug that in. Notice the red is on the top. Right, what I need to do is just make sure that the screen is clean. So I'm just going to take a lens cleaner or you could use a tissue. And I take that same rubbing alcohol and I just give it a wipe. So I just give it a wipe. It's wet. And now over here, I just wipe it where it's dry. And there you can see, and there it's completely clean. And I follow the same procedure for the one on the inside, which is now clean. And I just put this on top. Now you might want to do a provisional test so you can make sure that everything is dry and then quickly plug into your computer. And I'm just going to do a few key presses and so far so good, it's all looking good. And the ones that were really not working was this one over here and there it's working perfectly. So all I need to do is put the screws in and put all the keys back on. I like to start in the middle and move outwards. Right, we're just going to repopulate the keys using the template here on the box. Right, all the keys have now been returned and time to do some final testing. So all the keys are now bouncy and none of them are sticking. Right, testing all the keys. Right, so all working. Now say for example you want to remove one of these. All I do is I take my screwdriver and I flip it up like that. And then I gently remove it upwards. Now if I want to return it, notice that the back has a specific shape. If you have a look on the board, there's the LED. So I need to make sure that the wider spot aligns with that LED. Now when I return it, I seat it in. Like that. And then I press it down. Notice it's seated in. And only once it's seated in, then I can depress it. And to remove... Now, if this is very dirty, you can put it in some very hot water and let it dissolve and then it will remove any of that dirt. And you might even see some sediment floating in here because there was some tomato juice spilled on this particular button. Thanks for watching and cheers.